Welcome everyone watching this program on replay and thank you for joining us. I'm Steve with Bobby and Eisenstein and this is the Rare Book Cafe, the first and only black TV show in the entire world about antiquarian books. We want to thank you for joining us on blab.im. The Rare Book Cafe is brought to you by the Florida Antiquarian Book Fair. My co-host today is Lindsay Thompson of Henry Bemis Books. Lauren Donnelly will be back with the three of us next week. He's still at Rare Book School and learning things to tell us when he comes back. Later in the program, Edie's going to be talking to you about the new overall miniature catalog. Gigi, you've been on the show before, so we can't throw you in the hot seat twice. <laughs> so, as always, through the miracle of modern technology, visitors to our show can send text and comments. If you have a question about a book, if you have a book, you want to find out what it's worth, possibly where to sell it, give us an instant message in the right-hand column, and we will talk to you about it. We have uncovered some interesting things with people on the show in the past. Today... We're going to be talking to Gigi about her new location, and I have a pertinent question, but I think I answered it myself. We'll get to that later. So you can see us through the miracle of modern technology and ask us questions. We'll be watching away. If you see the little pair of hands that are in the corner of each picture, if you like what the speaker is saying, give us a little bit to it. That way we know that you like what you're hearing. If you're new to the program and you want to be alerted about other episodes, watch us on Blab and Twitter. Tune in on the Books on the Bookshelf prior to this at WDBRadio.com, and we'll be happy to talk rare books with you. And finally, this program is being recorded so you or your friends can watch the replay on Blab or at the Florida Antiquarian Book Fair blog at floridabookfair.blogspot.com. That's floridabookfair.blogspot.com. Gigi, welcome back. Tell us about the new location. Thank you. We're really loving it. We are, we were previously in South Tampa in between Bayshore and McDill on Inner Bay very close to the base but we didn't get a lot of walking traffic so now we're in beautiful historic ebor and we're right across from the hcc the hillsborough county community college i mean you just step across the street and there are libraries upstairs and so we get students walking back and forth all day we really like this location let me ask you a question out of curiosity, Gigi. You were using the word near the base. I, I saw the Air Force Base libraries on Antigua and on Ascension Island. Um, I also saw the one at Patrick Air Force Base. Do you ever get interesting calls from people leaving and find a nice collection from these bases? Because what I saw them give to their library were very you know, there were some nice books in some of those libraries i would think that i would ask you know do the does the base give you an area to get books in they have a library but they don't have the sales um you know how your local community library has a sales room um the military base doesn't um i think every now and then you'll see some on a cart but McDill has a very nice library on their base. Of course, it's not as big as your local library, but they have a lot of interesting things there. So McDill Air Force Base is very was very close to us. What, what I was referring to, you you know, what you said also fits in. But what I was referring to was soldiers leaving, like an army captain is leaving, and he was a devout military historian, and lo and behold, the collection winds up in your door. Might be a place to watch to see if anybody's leaving the base and they have books. Yeah, that's a good you idea. Know, just, we that, get, that's what I was trying to bring out. Yeah, yeah, we get we get people, we used to get people who came down from the base and, like you said, said they were moving and um, you know, could we use these books or whatever? And so um, we, and also, you know, you get clients from there who come looking for a bookstore because there, was, there wasn't any other bookstore down 
um, below Gandhi. So, especially uh, antiquarian. So, but, what what is the new store like? Is there any way you can show us without well, losing, without losing the see. connection? Okay, <laughs> I'm gonna try to lift up the computer and see if you can see in back of me. Oh, oh wow! Can you, you see? You're in a big location if I'm looking through a window. What am yes. I? Yes. Wow. You're actually, yeah, you're actually seeing the inside of the store. And um, this is the area, like if you go over here, this is an area we have on African diaspora. And then when you go back this way, you'll see all the different shelves that we have, the shelving, the different books. Over here, we have a nice collection of leather-bound books. Wow. Over nice. here, this is my trusty assistant partner. That's uh, Skip. Hey, Skip. <laughs> wow, nice and, cabinet. Yes, and we have um, another room that we have uh, different um, children's books in. We have a children's book room. I'm moving slow so it doesn't change. Now, let me ask you a question, Gigi. And it might have been that your camera was picking up on a picture or something. But I mm -hmm. got the impression that you're on a high floor. It looked like a shopping mall or something. No, it not like really. Looking, it looked like I was looking into a mall in a glass window. Maybe it was the picture on a book. Oh, yeah, or yeah, because we're directly, when I... I, I'm close enough to the front, too, so I can show you the college, like, right across. I'm going back to a room that we have that's we sell tea and coffee. So we have a little room back here that where you could drink your tea or coffee or you could sit on the couch and drink it. And this is our children's books in here, in this room. Wow. We have all the children's books. How many rooms are there? Um, it's actually three rooms. It's a large room out front, then this small room, and then we have a, I have an office. Um, and it's really nice because I didn't have an office at the other one. Yeah. And this is the tea area right here. You see the tea? Yes. We have, yes. And then going up, I'm going to show you, it's close enough that I can walk out the door and show you the campus right across the street. That I'd love to see. Yeah. Okay, I'm on the outside now. Don't lose your signal. Yeah, that's what and, I saw. You must have been Yeah, when I first turned. So we're yeah. right on the street here. And so there's the campus. And then we have a, out front here, we keep a little chess board and people come by and play chess. We are they losing just stop you. by and play chess. Yes. We're losing you. Come back. Go, go back to your base because we're going to lose you. I heard the okay. signal drifting. Okay. I'm coming back in. And this is an, another area we have over here with books. Yeah, you get too far away from that. Yeah. And then on this side too. Wow. And then you can see up here. When you eventually sit back down in the uh -huh. message in the message column, you know where that uh -huh. is and how to put one in. Yes. Put Send in a message. The address of your store, how people can contact you. Okay. It's fifteen oh one. South 9th or East 9th Avenue. And we're 1501B. There's somebody in A. East. That, that's not a bad idea. Yeah. And we're. Uh, what Lindsay wrote in, but we need to. I'm waiting to see your address posted. Okay. I don't, I don't see that. Let me ask you a question. Does your city allow you to put out like what we affectionately call in our store? The dollar book rack? Yes, I have one. Um, Great. 
The only thing um, you have to be able to have room um, for wheelchairs and things to go by. So we have that. And because we're in a historic district, there's only certain things like you can't, you can only cover your window. Um, only 25% of your window can be covered. Uh, we like the historic building, the high ceilings. It's, it's very nice. Yeah, it's a beautiful location. An absolutely Thank you. beautiful location. May you have nothing but success with it. Thank you. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Lindsay, let me ask you a question. Any new acquisitions on your side this week? And if you have any particular, well, let, me teach you, let me say one thing. After Lindsay speaks, if you have anything you want to show the audience as an individual item, please put it in front of the camera. Okay, I'll do that. Well, I've, I've had a couple, two or three things come in that are interesting. And, and one was not for me to sell, but an actual gift from a customer. Uh, someone I've chatted with on uh, my Facebook account fairly regularly. And this past week, we were talking a bit about the birthday of the philosopher Eric Hoffer, who was a big name in the 60s and 70s and uh, one fame for a book called uh, The True Nature of Mass Movements in Politics back in 1951. What made Hoffer was unusual was that he was essentially self-educated and worked as a longshoreman in San Francisco. So he lived in an SRO apartment in San Francisco while thinking all these deep thoughts and ransacking the San Francisco library and ended up publishing a dozen books and being on several presidential commissions. I mentioned to my friend that I had not read The True Believer, and he said, well, I'll send you a copy. So I thought he'd send me a link to a PDF somewhere online, but about three days later from Amazon, here came a very nice copy as a gift from one of my customers. Wow, and that's, that's one nice. Of the I really like about the book business is you meet such nice people. Then uh, something that came in that might be of some interest to our guest, I did a little reading on Ybor City, and it's amazing how, how big a deal it was in the cigar industry in its heyday. Yeah. I was uh, learning about how the industry came there after uh, Mr. Ybor found that Key West didn't have enough space for his, city his warehouses. We came up and created this new space to make cigars. And in its heyday, Ybor City produced 500 million cigars in 1929. The one book that has come in that's really fascinating because I didn't know a lot about it, is this book on cigar labels, which we have in a first edition. I need it. It's a beautiful book, copiously illustrated. Oh, yeah, that's beautiful. And really a labor of love from about 20 years ago. The uh, very large illustrations, explanations of all the labels. And for the cigar aficionado, this would be one of those must-have sorts of books. I agree with you. I have that book in my collection. Another book oh. And a couple of other things that came in. I'm always interested in old books about science because they give a glimpse of a time that has gone by and how in some ways people knew the same things we do and in other ways they were completely clueless. And one is uh, Professor Kroll's 1886 book called Climate and Cosmology, which is the most fascinating uh, compilation of early scientific observations of weather and meteorology and utter nonsense that I've ever read. Uh, but it makes fascinating reading because he actually had some theories about what we now discuss as climate change even 120 years ago. So you get all kinds of again during the course of a week. Yeah. Gigi, what about you? Did you have something you wanted to put on, let people know it's available? 
Yeah, there's a book right here. It's really fascinating because, you know, we're in the middle of the cigar district, but the immigrant world of Ybor City. And this is a fascinating book. And uh, it's signed not only by the author, but the illustrators. Wow. And it's, yeah, Pacheco, the fight doctor. All right, Pacheco did that? Yes, George E. Pacheco. It says uh, to Bert and Betty, thanks for your support. And that's from um, Ferdy, I guess. Bernie, Bernie uh, Pacheco, yes. Yeah, yeah, let me that's tell you, him. Well, let me that's tell him you, right like, there. Yes, I know the signature. His, he was the sports doctor. He was a sports doctor, as you said. In uh -huh. Miami... I am beginning to believe from the experiences I have seen with his works turning up. And if you owe, if he owes you money, you got paid in his lithographs. Oh, I say okay. that tongue in cheek, but he has wound up. I have seen large numbers of people? his um, lithographs and prints wind up in different auctions and at one of them I know was a storage auction it was very surprising and the guy who found it was very lucky you got a nice thing there well this is another book I want to show you this is a very unusual book oh. and it's the New York Times great stories of the century now what's interesting about this it has all of these old newspaper clippings. Mm -hmm. And it's a fascinating book. It's very, it's like one of the nicest books and it's leather bound. Mm. And it's the major events of the 20th century as reported in the pages of the New York Times. Bound in genuine leather, Norwalk, Connecticut. Is that now, this is that an Eastern Press title? Um, Senior I believe so. Yes. Yeah. Yes, yeah. it is. Yes. Eastern Press. And this is a reprint. Um, it was copyrighted many times. And this is the 1999 edition. But it actually has in the front of it a chronology and listing of all the articles in here. Mm -hmm. And this is something that when people come in, they're always fascinated. In fact, one of the benefits of being right across from the college, this college has um, a radio station. They have a um, mass communications program. So I've been, they, the gentleman asked me to come over and interview on their radio station. Their radio station is, you know, like this, it's online. And I went over and spoke to them and also uh, the newspaper class came over and took pictures of this book. And, and the interesting thing about being in a location like this, we never know who we're going to meet. We had some gentlemen come from Denmark and they were sightseeing and they asked us where a good restaurant was. My husband recommended to Columbia. They sent us back a nice thank you um, that they went there and really loved it. We have people, had people come in from Germany. We've had um, people come in from Ireland. It's just fascinating that all the different people that you meet here and from all the different places. And they're all just so friendly and just happy to be here. So I, I like that about Ybor City. Ybor City does a draw. Yes. You know, there's nothing nicer than selling books in a town that people like to visit. Wow. Yes, it is. It is. And that, and that makes a big difference because the benefit of this location is not only do I have the college students across the street, which, you know, they're on break, so it's going to get really busy. But the I, everybody has been so, I guess, um, welcoming. The president of the college came over to see us. The 
head of the English department, <laughs> you know, so it's, it's been really wonderful. And we joined the, um, of course we joined the chamber as soon as we got here and we're going to have a ribbon cutting on September the 16th from 4.30 to 6.30 PM. And we will send out information because that's a Friday. And on Fridays we're open from 12 PM to 8 PM just so we can get some of that late night, you know, traffic, people walking around. Oh, I, I understand that well. My last store was on Collins Avenue in between two bars. I always hoped somebody would get drunk enough to buy a really rare book to impress a girlfriend, <laughs> but it never happened. Listen, I'm gonna take a break for a minute. I am gonna introduce my wife, Edie, who you all know. Gigi, you know Edie from the book shows and other times. Yes. I've gotta yes. take a break. And Oak Knoll just came out with a great catalog on miniature books, and she's going to tell you a little bit about it. Okay. Edie, I'm introducing you. I'll fix that up. Hello. Hi, Edie. How are you doing? I'm doing real well. How are you doing? You look terrific. Hi. And so do you, Lindsay. Well, thank you. Well, I told you last week that I had contacted Oak Knoll Books to get their catalog on miniature books. I wound up talking to Rob Fleck, who is Robert Fleck III. And I also spoke to his father, who is Robert Fleck II. And his father, Robert Fleck, had started opening. So part of the wonderful thing about looking for this catalog or trying to acquire it was having the opportunity of talking to two, these two great guys. I mean, it was really a wonderful thing. And I told them, with his permission, I'm giving out his phone number, which is 302-328-7232. And if you call, you would want to talk to Rob Fleck, which even though his name is Robert, they call him Rob. And they are in Newcastle, Delaware. So anybody in Newcastle, Delaware, over to their store at 310 Delaware Street. They said, okay. Yeah, they uh, sent I was me, just going to ask you. Go ahead. Okay. They sent me part two of a miniature book catalog that has in it 247 items of 2,700 that they purchased from one collector. I mean, wow. that, yeah, that, that would, to me was mind boggling. And they're out of these, I, don't, I didn't ask him how he, I didn't have the catalog at that point, but I will call him again, that they had gotten them from Don Sanford. And years before, they had gotten his books on books. Oak Knoll Books, to me, is synonymous with books on books. Robert Fleck II said they'll never stop publishing books on books. Rob III feels that their focus will be on miniature books. This okay. miniature book catalog is absolutely gorgeous. This is the back cover. This is the front cover. And inside, there are all of these books enumerated with detailed descriptions of each one and the prices they're looking to get them. And they had also had a story in the front about the collector of the books who they had acquired these 2,700 books from. As wow. a nice surprise, they said, he sent me also their catalog number 311. 
And this is the this is the cover of the catalog. This is the back cover of the catalog. So you see the Their catalogs are just their works of art in themselves. Their beautiful color illustrations, detailed descriptions of the books that they are offering for sale. And in this edition, there are featured books, there are artist books, there are miniature books, there are private and fine press books. There are bookbinding, paper making, printing, and calligraphy books. And of course, books about books and bibliographies and references. It's fantastic. And where some people will sit down and read the newspaper or read the New York Times, or you know, I can sit and a book like this and I marvel at the descriptions and what's in there. What was your question for me, love? Oh, I was just going to ask you if you could either type in or have your husband type in to where you send a message, the name of the company again and their address. Okay, Stephen. Yes. When you get on here, you will type in Oak Knoll Books sure. and their address and their phone number. Okay. Somebody just, yeah, somebody just typed in Oak Knoll Books. We just need the address. Okay, right. sounds good. Okay, yeah, oh, it's, it's their beautiful thing. And anyhow, so I, I want to thank him. I hope that you're listening, Rob. I hope your dad, Robert, is listening. And I hope that your little 10 month old baby is doing well. <laughs> He's not going to, I've never been to a miniature book conclave. That's one of my goals in life on my bucket list. But, you know, it's coming up, it's in Europe, and I'm, and I'm not going. But one day I will get to be at one. He's not going this year because he has a little baby. And that's okay. a great reason why. And I will have Stephen type in this address. Okay, thank you. You are welcome. Good to see you. Good to see Same you. Same here. Friend. I know. It's always good to be seen. I'll see you in April at the book yes. fair. Yes, we'll see you then. Okay. Here's Steve back. We'll also add the contact information for Oak Knoll on the uh, Florida Book Fair website. Okay. Which is, uh, let me get the address for that. FloridaBookFair.blogspot.com. Oh, is the little girl said I'm back? What science fiction movie was that from? I'm back. Um, the Shining. The Shining. Yes. I'm gonna type in Oak Knoll's books. Here is the let me just focus on that for a second. You guys, who's got the next book they want to show or want something to say? Because I just found, we, we did a little book hunting. I'd like to show a few things, too. But let me get Oak Knoll's address in first. Okay. Well, one of the things that we've gotten is a lot of, recently, a lot of rare African books. And um, one of the books we got is Owa, Ifa, and the Theology of Orisha Divination. So that was a, quite a find. And then another one, the Handbook of Yoruba Religion, Religious Concepts. So these are small books, but they're rare. And we, like I said, been getting a few of those. We got a collection all at one time. And um, although we have a lot of books on the African diaspora, that was very interesting to us to um, get this book. Another, um, some more unusual books we have too, is Chester Himes. Edie was talking about overseas, Chester Himes in French. Mm. And we have several of his smaller, uh, this one's in Spanish. Yeah, this one's in Spanish, but we have several of his books in French also. And I know everybody knows who Chester Himes is. Yes. Yes. <laughs> no, Chester. 
a whole group of others from the Harlem schools and others. Harlem Renaissance, yes, definitely. Um, Curious, do you do you follow the website Bookshy? No, I never heard of that. It, I think it would be uh, very interesting to you. It's called bookshybooks.com, all one word. Okay. And it's maintained by a, uh, I don't know if it's a man or a woman, but for my money, it's the best uh, website I've seen for books out of Africa. Okay. The, uh, the comprehensiveness of the things they post is breathtaking sometimes. If, if I wanted to find out what's going on now, in virtually any subject from comic books to fiction uh bookshy is where i would go first okay it's on my, my regular list of bookmarks and you might find it interesting to have a look at okay definitely i'm always looking for you know new places that where people are very knowledgeable because mm -hmm. you don't always get that so yes. I, I think that's wonderful Gigi, you might also want to look at two other sites on Facebook if you haven't seen them. They're, at least to me, they're new. And I thank Lindsay and Matt Mean and a couple of others for showing them to me and Lindsay, you know, sponsoring me on the one. Um, it is Book Collectors. You go to Facebook and write in, just write in the word book. Book. Yeah. You will get one that says book collectors, and you will get another one that says buy, sell, rare, sign. You definitely want to see what's going on on those sites. Okay. We okay. say book collectors and buy, sell. What's the other one called? Buy. It's start, Lindsay, do you got a better handle on the exact names than I do? Uh, let me look it up right quick. Can you check okay. and I'll find it. Okay. Um, they're great sites. They just started. One of them has something like 2,000 people. The other one has 500. Um, and some really interesting things are going on there. It's, okay. it's called book collecting. Um, Why not just put it into the message board? Okay. Yes. Okay. I mean, thanks, Lindsay. So we do book hunting, too. I, is, I just sometimes don't always have them here because if it's not here it's at the warehouse these haven't made it to the warehouse yet and everybody kind of knows i favor arch architecture photography things like that we were kind of lucky to find and i use this as a teaching example also this is what they call a stock photo book yes one of the ways that's fun to date things and if they don't have a date on it or this date is by the digits of the phone number the presence or absence of a zip code, things like that. Well, it's nice when you have multiple runs or, you know, somewhat of a run of the Lambert Studio stock photos. While it's not an Ansel Adams or, you know, Edward Weston type photography studio, it still has a collectible following. And if you look online, probably the fair market value, um, for each one of these is probably in the $40 to $60 range. As I say, one of the things about that's interesting in this field is to me, I guess in the 1980s, take 1980 as a cutoff point, books in publishing went under major changing. So if a modern first edition fiction is the title is going to come out or something is going to come out, hit from that time period back, they're going to be printing it in larger runs and numbers than they mm -hmm. normally would prior to that. So by example, this is an, a photography book by Richard Abingdon, okay? And I believe the publication date was around 2003. I was, it's an accordion style book, just to let you know. And what I was surprised to find out about this 2003 art book was the price, and it's probably in the $75 to $100 price range, dependent on whose price you're using. Wow. When you talk about art books of an older vision, and this is an interesting history on this book, this is a catalog resume of Mark Chagall done by Abrams. When I first started in the book collecting game, we couldn't wait till we found these catalog resumes. Now, this is an Abrams art book. Um, 
1963. When I found this book with more frequency than I did now, and I haven't found a copy of this, probably, I'm not saying they're not out there, they are definitely out there, but I haven't personally found one in a very long time. The last one I had was probably in the $75 to $90 range. What surprised me, since I didn't find a copy in quite a long time, what the price of this book was today. It really wasn't that much different. It's about a $100 book today. So it's okay, just interesting. Well, yeah, it hasn't changed that much, you know. Um, but where it gets to be fun sometimes at the garage sales is when you find these old classic early 1900s children's books with the beautiful chroma lithograph illustrations and so on. Um, this one in particular is by John Cicely Clay. Um, Bob's Merrill, uh, 1904, and the retail value on this is somewhere in the seventy-five to hundred dollar range. But when, when you figure that it all came out of an estate sale for a twenty dollar bill, oh, happy, you can't happy beat book, that! <laughs> happy you can book, <laughs> uh, happy book buying oh. to us, you know? Oh, right. I mean, that's the thing. A lot of times I ask people, do you go to garage sales, estate sales, and you get a kind of, well, I'm past that now, you know, but I'll never be past garage sales. And yeah, sales. I mean, you never know. Sometimes you go, I mean, we've been in business since 1997. And You're when a we puppy. Were in Virginia, You're a puppy. <laughs> so when we were in Virginia Beach, we used to go to a lot of those estate sales and find a lot of things, like you say, really, you know, odd. We found, um, we went to this old bookshop one time and found a signed Stephen King for $4 and sold it for 400 And that was back. That has been a long time ago at that price. <laughs> yes, yeah. that was a long time ago. But um, yeah, we, we try to go, I think my husband goes, Skip goes more than I do. He'll gotcha. ride up and down the road yeah. and stop. But lately, a lot of the, a lot of the um, ones where we live, um, the estate sales, we don't find as many books. People try to bring us some, you know, but usually the ones they bring us aren't worth much. They just think because they're uh, old, yeah, they're worth something. Just sometimes there's, hi, Gigi. Sometimes there's a, a gem in there, so you always have to look at them, don't you? Yeah, you do. You Gigi, do. I you have to look because, at uh, enjoying your your uh, tour of the store and your your visit, but I just wanted to pop in and uh, mention something that that I know about Gigi that I wanted to uh, her to to talk about a little bit. Gigi works a lot in genealogy, and uh, just was going to invite you to talk a little bit about uh, genealogy. I'm going to pop out and still be listening though. Big brother is watching. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> He's watching. Um, I'm a genealogist, and um, one of the things I belong to several hereditary societies. I belong to Daughters of the American Revolution, Colonial Dames of the 17th Century. I'm the Florida governor for Sons and Daughters of the Pilgrims. Um, I am. I belong to Daughters of the Union, Veterans of the Civil War, New England Women. Uh, just just to name a few. And so one of the things, I have a collection of genealogy books because a lot of times I'll find them. And one thing that people don't realize is nobody, not many people are buying the how-to books. You know, how do I do this? Because there's Ancestry.com and things like that. But um when you find a book that has like the Harmon family or speaking of my family the locust family and they have information a lot of times that can help people with um their charts and i wrote a book um and i just changed my title i just went to a family reunion family reunions are really important I just changed the cover of my book, Thomas the Melungeon, and it can be ordered on my website. 
and it's about free people of color in the Civil War and the Revolutionary War, uh, told going back from my grandmother on back to 1665 when um, our great grandmother came from England in 16, she was born in 1646 and my great great grandfather was born in 1636. She was a British um, indentured servant maid and he was an African slash Indian indentured servant. So it's very fascinating. I've done my DNA and it's just one of those things that ties in well to the book business because I go and speak at different libraries. They just put my book in the Daughters of the American Revolution library. It's in downtown genealogy library, The um, also in the North Carolina archives because a lot of my people were from North Carolina. But um, it's, it's very interesting and it's, you know, something when you're an author too in the book business. Back in the day, I don't have one in front of me that I can point right to, but back in the day of the Antiquarian Bookman's Weekly, there would be huge boxy heads for genealogy material, you know, the, the books from the 17, 18, 19, early 1900s. When we used to find them right. with some degree of frequency, you don't see them as much out there anymore. At least in where we're hunting, we don't. Do you ever walk into houses and find, especially because you're looking for people know you're looking for? Do you ever come across in the in the last few years a good solid vintage genealogy collection? Um. Yes. A matter of fact. This is rare that you say this. Actually, a gentleman bought us over some. His mother must have been a DAR and she passed away. So he bought us all of these books. He had no use for them. He wasn't interested in it. Along with a collection of other books, we got a lot of books that had to do with New England. And I guess that's where her family was. And a lot of surnames and the kind of books that people would be looking for if they were doing their um, research. Yeah. So. Lindsay, anything to say on that? Well, I was just wondering if that's one of those areas where the internet has taken over, where books once served uh, that function. You know, that, I was looking the other day for some information about my grandparents and stumbled into a vast, uh, website about my great maternal grandfather's family that somebody had over time put mm -hmm. together and it's it's such an easy thing to share which of course is one of the things genealogists love to do i wonder if the books haven't just been gone yes. out the back door once they all got transferred online i'm gonna tell you what happens so much with those kind of books people uh, when they get them they that, keep them they don't resell them and the, and the way you get them is like that. Like he said, with an estate sale or when somebody dies and the children aren't interested, that's how you get those books. Now you can go online. You can actually Google some of your um, ancestors and I've Googled some of mine, but those people that I found, of course, were those people, my great grandfather who settled North Carolina, who's called the father of North Carolina and they have his Bible in the um, University of North Carolina, Chapel Hill, his Bible was printed in 1599 in England. And he bought it with him and it's in beautiful condition. Uh, I, I, don't, I wouldn't even know what it would be worth, but those type of people, you find a lot of information and you, you just have to be careful when you just Re rely on online information because people always want to connect to the most <laughs> famous person that they think, yeah. you know, has that surname. And so like I have hookers in my family and immediately they want to connect, you know, to um, Captain Hooker who founded Connecticut, you know, they want to come out from there, but you have to make sure you go to the courthouses, you go to the um, 
graveyards. That's what I did last weekend. I was in a graveyard <laughs> and uh, went to a family reunion and found this wonderful graveyard in the back of one of my distant cousin's houses that I had never met. And there's tombstones been there since the 1700s. Well, that's how the, uh, the understanding so. of Abraham Lincoln's legal career has been essentially re we understood in the last 25 years because there was a project to go through all the yes. courthouses in Illinois and a few surrounding states where he was known to have practiced and actually go through the court records. Tens of thousands of pleadings and documents and briefs that nobody had seen turned up because nobody had ever gone to look. Mm -hmm. One of right. the things that we used to hear a lot and I said, when you were talking about genealogy, you know, saying it before was somebody would walk into a booth over at a bookshelf. And the two things that we don't hear with much frequency anymore because of the computer is, I've been looking for that book all my life. And do you have any genealogy? You don't, you don't hear it that much. Right. And the computer definitely, definitely is the answer mm -hmm. to that. Yeah. But it's even like, Ancestry.com. People think that they're going to go on the internet and because Ancestry.com says this, well, just you'll see a leaf and it will connect you all the way back to England or all the way back to Ireland or whatever. But you don't know that that's the person you're connecting to and you have to take each person's tree with a grain of salt. And I found some wonderful things on there. I found my um, second great, my, my uh, great grandfather's, um, the will from my second great grandfather to my first great grandfather that was on there. But then when I looked again, somebody had taken it off. I found the portrait of my third great grandparents. And so sometimes, yes, you will find things, but you know, you have to know what you're you you look up on the I, things. I Let's say wanted, that. You know, look I up. wanted eventually. I'm not. I guess in another couple of years, maybe. I'll, I really want to pursue my lineage because of the gypsy mixture that's in me. But before I do that, I'm, I was listening to something that you said before. I want the DNA test first because if I get the DNA test, I know which leaves oh. are fig leaves covering up BS. And I know which, you know, maybe could lead to, you know, something in the genealogy tree. Uh, it's an interesting point. Yeah, just because they say it doesn't mean that it is. Um, I see we are getting close to wrap time. So I am asking okay. if anybody has any questions for anybody on the panel, if you do, please enter them in the message column. It's been a little while since we told the listener what kind of rare book they have. So if you have a question on a rare book, we'd love to tell you about it. Remember that the Florida Antiquarian Book Fair has moved the dates to April 21st, 22nd, and 23rd of 2017. Be sure to reschedule that on your calendar. Um, there is a good possibility um, I am not going to be here next week. But we'll let you know. The show will go on, but I might not be here next week. Um, we'll let you know a little more as that develops. I've got to check some applications on my phone. If I can do the show from the road, we will definitely be there. Um, any closing comments from anybody? Well, our, our friends should uh, know that uh, we will be posting uh, an archive version of the show shortly on both the Florida Book Fair site, which is floridabookfair.blogspot.com, and also on YouTube under Rare Book Cafe. And on the Book Fair site, we'll also be adding uh, links to some of the resources that have been mentioned in this program. And we'll also be uh, giving some links to uh, Gigi's store. We ran a, a profile of it promoting this show, but we'll also be uh, updating that so that people can follow the big blue ribbon cutting in a couple of weeks. So whenever re viewers want to know what's going on with the show, the Book Fair blog spot site is a good place to start. We're updating it regularly with information and with back editions of the program. 
That's phenomenal. That is really phenomenal. I am seeing somebody that looks like BBRT Angel. Do you have a question? That's no, oh, that's okay. me. But somebody else, somebody, yeah, somebody asked me. Um, I guess it was you. Um, have I found my coat of arms? So the ancestor I was telling you about that they call the father of North Carolina. His name uh, is George Durant. And yes, uh, I have his coat of arms. Well, and it's a legit, it's a legitimate coat of arms. It has been. It was given to me by the colonial dames of the 17th century. You know, a lot of people go online and see this coat of arms and pull it, but you don't know if that's sure because several fam some families had several coats of arms. So you got to know it goes to that ancestor. But somebody named George says he that's had a I question. Was, okay, so that took care of that. Got that one. Um, I don't see any questions in there. Um, Gigi, it's been a pleasure. Let me just say one thing. You might want to look into a company called Bailey Biddle and Banks that issued medals, medallions, and things like that. I'm pretty sure they have a famous one for the DAR. Um, we once bought a big treasure trove of these medals that they put out. And I'm pretty sure there was a, um, a DAR and another one in it. And it was a fairly rare medal, so you might not know of it. But I just throw that out in the conversation. Yeah, and it's and it's Bailey oh, Banks. Bailey Biddle, Biddle Banks, or, or did I, you, who say, you? If you know what you're saying it the right way, okay. You know, I, I get confused in the third hour. Uh, Gigi, thanks a lot for being with us. You are welcome anytime. And if you ever want to do another radio program besides the university, like I said, we found out that the radio program box on the bookshelf, thirty-five thousand seven hundred fifty-six people have talked about the show. Rare Book Cafe, Bucks wow. on the Bookshelf. These are the only two places in the world, literally, where you can get information about the wonderful world of rare books. So we made again happy book sales to all. And if we're